Hello, true believers. High Definition here, and this is a breakdown of the latest Jane Foster trailer for the Marvel's Avengers game, titled The Mighty Thor Out of Time. A trailer like this has been anticipated for months by players, seeing that this is the first time in a long run that we're actually seeing not just the design of a new character, but also new story details for the world in the Avengers game. So, join me as I break down every visual and audio detail that you may have missed while watching the new trailer on your own. Remember that you can support this channel by liking the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to this channel, and ring the bell to be notified about similar breakdowns of your favorite Marvel video games. With that, let's check out our first look at Jane Foster. Roll the clip. We begin with this shot of Jane Foster's character icon in this cosmic background of some kind. Something to note here in this clear galaxy sky is that it strikes some similarities to the prismatic color scheme of the Bifrost, the bridge leading to Earth in Asgard. This clean visual quickly gets interrupted as the image transitions with crackles of lightning, showing the Jane's icon in more detail, but also with the clear galaxy sky now showing these cracks and also itself changing in appearance. What we're seeing here appears to be similar to the imagery we see later on in this trailer of Jane being portaled away out of her own timeline. Hence the name of this trailer, The Mighty Thor Out of Time. My theory is that these have to do with the Tachyon Rifts that we've already seen in the game itself. I'll have more on that later in this video. We then see a zoom into Jane's icon, eventually transitioning from this warp into a ruined depiction of Asgard. That warp again likely alluding to how she ends up in the main timeline of the Avengers game. Let's move on. In my timeline, Asgard has fallen. The gods said the end of days would cast the Ten Realms into ice and darkness. Instead, it was fire and blood. Here, Jane Foster shares her story of what she's been experiencing in her universe, Asgard being in a fallen state. She says here that the gods said ice and darkness would take over the Ten Realms during the end of days, likely a small detail on the power of Loki and the frost giants in this universe. Instead, she says fire and blood happened during this apocalyptic event for Asgard. This almost seems like the situation seen in Thor Ragnarok, a story in which Asgard falls into a similar state of fire and blood. Here, we also get our first official image of Jane Foster's character design for the Avengers game. As all of the iconic looks for the characters go, it follows heavy inspirations from the comics, but with creative changes to fit in with the game's world as a whole. This appearance definitely seems like a subtle mix between Jane's known outfit as the God of Thunder, but also her time as a Valkyrie. Instead of a big helmet, we'll be treated to this Valkyrie-inspired headpiece that shows off those gorgeous golden locks in flowing detail. Only time will tell if the developers at Crystal Dynamics finally increased hair length of characters. I'm sure there are plenty of comic book fans out there that would love to see long hair for Jane as well. There's still much more to discuss in this trailer though, so let's move on. Odinson never returned from Earth, and without his son to protect Asgard from outside influence, the Allfather went mad. Jane says here that Thor never returned from Earth, meaning that he likely spent plenty of time with the Avengers and some bad stuff went down. Probably a more worse situation than the future imperfect storyline that we got with Maestro Hulk and future Monica. Jane goes on to say Thor's dad Odin got pissed when his son was not there to protect Asgard from outsiders. This, I believe, also marks the first time that we actually see the appearance of Odin from the Avengers game universe as well. A cool detail here on Odin also is that we see two ravens hanging out on his shoulders. These ravens are named in the Old Norse language as Thought and the other Memory or Mind in other words. This pair is said to fly all over the world and bring information to Odin. I'm guessing he didn't need them to tell him about Thor not coming back home. Also interesting enough, we see this dope looking axe being wielded by Odin. I believe this may be original in the game, seeing that Odin is more known to use a three-pronged spear called Gungnir. Gungnir? Gungnir. 
I'll just leave it like that. Or the Spear of Heaven. Could this be a weapon that we may see Thor or Jane with for one of their new skins? Only time will tell. Let's move on into our trailer though. Mjolnir chose me to take up the mantle, but it was too late. Odin had locked the Allmother away and declared those loyal to her as his enemy. And if he had to destroy Asgard to root out rebellion, so be it. Jane says here that Mjolnir chose her to take up the mantle, but it was too late since Odin would end up locking away Queen Frigga, Thor's mom, and declaring enemies of those loyal to rebel with her even opting to destroy Asgard to root those people out. Now, while I could find no mention of why he acts this way in this trailer or in the comics, we can probably assume that corruption must have been a factor in this situation. The likely culprits seem to be Loki or Hela, but hopefully the developers will continue this plot detail in one way or another. I wouldn't be surprised if it's detailed in audio logs like what happened in Spider-Man's mission chains during his release. Even elevator dialogue is a possibility here. Moving on. I was used to fighting battles. I was used to facing down darkness. Here, Jane says she is used to fighting battles, complete with a shot of her with the Avengers, likely from the alternate timeline where she's from. Now, as a huge nerd for the concept of timelines and multiverses like in Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness or Loki even, I love here that we see a showcase of similar events, possibly done differently compared to the main Avengers timeline. The idea is driven further by the fact that these crazy color schemes are representative of the crazy colors some players may choose to wear in the game. This all thanks to the Tachyon anomaly shenanigans that happened in the main timeline. It can also be a subtle clue as to how Jane ends up portaling her way into the main Avengers timeline as well. Judging by the next shot with Jane and Thor in a hospital room, we can assume that Jane assisted the Avengers for some time, all while under the effects of cancer and all while Thor in her timeline lost his arm. Seeing how Thor never makes it back to Asgard like I mentioned earlier, we can also assume that stuff must have hit the fan later on down the line for the Avengers, eventually leading up to a ruined Asgard that we saw before. Let's move on though. But this... Even I had to admit, I needed help. So, I made a deal with the last person in the Ten Realms I would ever turn to. My father always said, if a man can't smile without making you uneasy, that man is rotten to the core. Jane here says that she admits needing help, as her conflict with this alternate Odin became too difficult for her to experience. This results in her making a deal with the person she least expected, that person being our favorite god of mischief, Loki. We also need to take a second to appreciate the actual first true appearance of Loki in the Avengers game as well. Here's hoping that we eventually get to fight this guy in game in the future as well. She later repeats some words spoken by her father saying that if a man can't smile without making you uneasy, that man is rotten to the core, but sometimes you have to make compromises. Again, this situation must have been pretty bad for Jane to ask help from Loki. Even her face shows her shock in this decision that she made. My biggest question here though is, will we even get more context on these scenes? As I mentioned earlier, I think only time will tell if this fallen Asgard story ends up being mentioned in game at some point somehow. I would not anticipate experiencing this ruined Asgard event though, not anytime soon at least. But it could be cool to experience nonetheless. It would also be pretty cool to learn more about Jane Foster's father as well that she mentioned because I think in the MCU and in the comics, I think that's not really a clear answer. So that would be pretty cool if the Avengers, you know, universe actually introduced her father into the mix. So that would be interesting. Moving on though. But sometimes you have to make compromises and compromises have a price. I didn't want to pay, but you can't trick the god of mischief. 
Here, Jane explains that her partnership with Loki came at a price, and she did not want to pay him. Obviously, being unable to trick the trickster himself, what else is there for our Lady Thor to do? Thankfully, a strange portal sucks her in, and what do you know? We see these weird cracks from the first cuts of the trailer, surrounding the portal like it did to the Jane Foster icon as well. As Jane gets sucked into the portal, we see quick flashes of her alternate versions of herself, likely a nod to what outfits of hers we could expect in game. For those that aren't feeling her iconic look for the game, we're treated to this very comic inspired appearance of Jane in a full helmet, as well as another appearance in a different helmet and set of armor. Followed by this image of Jane in what looks to be her Valkyrie attire. Again, it's very likely we'll be seeing all of these outfits available in the game, and I'm looking forward to see what they look like fully modeled. Let's move on to the final bits of this trailer though. Well, I guess that's one way to do it. <laughs> Avengers, follow me. Here we see Jane rise up into the main timeline for the Avengers game, saying the line, well, I guess that's one way to do it. Meaning that this must have been a great way to actually end up tricking Loki. But who or what made the portal though? Well, like I mentioned before, the cracks that we saw around the portal strikes big similarities to the Tachyon storms that have already ripped holes into a new reality for the Avengers game. Those realities being teased in our Jane Foster flashback, as well as visions of her alternate appearances in the portal. So at the end of the day, Monica and AIM are still the main culprits in all of this. An almost full circle in the Avengers story we've experienced so far. The only thing that doesn't make sense to me is why did Jane Foster's Odin turn into a bad dude? Locking up his own wife and all that. My guess is that it's definitely not Monica, but maybe something much more sinister. Now that's all the visual and audio details that I could find in this trailer, but this question's for you though. Did this trailer make you more interested in Jane Foster's story in the Avengers games universe? You can follow me on Twitter at the true HD for superhero related tweets around the clock. Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to this channel and ring the bell for more Marvel's Avengers analysis videos leading up to Jane's release, plus much more Marvel content besides all that. As always, thanks so much for watching if you have, and I'll see you all on the next video. Peace.